This side Rahul Magan here is the Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting PT Limited. And today we would be talking about a very interesting circular which has been put up by Monetary Authority of Singapore, which is 610, Risk Aggregation and Statistics Reporting. As you very well understand that Treasury Consulting is a Singaporean group with the valuation stands closer to $10 million and we are serving clients across 60 countries of the globe. For more details, you can refer our uh, fixed income platform www.fixedincome.global which is being viewed in 148 countries of the globe and approximately 965 cities of the globe. And there are so many credentials which you have. You will get a tab who we are wherein all details are there. When it comes to MS 610, I would like to have deep respect for MS but according to me there are a lot of interpretation issues which are left in 610. Like if you refer our fixed income platform, you will get a section called blogs and in this one of the blogs which we wrote about the interpretation issues of 610 actually. Now 610 is having a lot of interpretation issues. Let me talk about what are these in, what are these interpretation issues all about, right? First of all, we need to understand that this is, we need to first appreciate that this is not the only video of 610. There are so many videos which are, which are bound to come about 610. Now let's talk straight. What 610 covers? 610 is this, which is Indian, sorry, which is Singaporean banking system. Singaporean banking system is quite huge. It's not small. Um, I served as a, as, as a corporate treasurer and according to me, approximately $1 trillion of trading is happening approximately per day in Singapore, which covers object finance, foreign exchange, commodities, everything. They have more than 500 top banks of the globe are working in uh, work are having offices in Singapore. Space is limited, might be virtually, might, might, might be a physical office. But the moral of the story is the regulator, which is Monetary Authority of Singapore. Monetary Authority of Singapore is the ultimate body who controls everything. And one of the fantastic institutions, like they are quite reachable. You can speak to them and you can share your views. They listen to your views. It's brilliant. I, I don't think that there is any, they, it's a wonderful institution to have, to be honest. Now, according to me, Singaporean banking system can be divided into two parts, apparently speaking, which is deliverable banking, which is non-deliverable banking. There are a lot of people come to me and saying, what is deliverable banking stands at? Now, deliverable banking is nothing but when you are in a country, when you are catering to the requirement of that country, example. Treasury Consulting is having two subsidiaries now, which is one in Singapore and one in India. Now, what deliverable is, when the Singaporean entity is contacting DBS and they are saying we need a bank guarantee of 1 million Singapore dollar and DBS Singapore is issuing us a bank guarantee of 1 million Singapore dollar, this is a deliverable banking. What is non-deliverable banking? Like Reliance Industries Limited, which is taking a non-deliverable position of two types, which is onshore, offshore spread and the NDF cross spread. Now they are taking this position sitting in India in Singapore because their Singapore subsidiary is acting as a channel partner and this entire trade is legitimate and has to be legitimate. But unfortunately there are many intelligent people we have in India without even understanding what this product stands at. They start calling it as a, as a speculation and a lot of words which you can't even think of, right? So we have two which is deliverable and not deliverable banking. When we add up these two. We end up banking books. This is quite right. Now, I think 610 would have some tough days, but not now, maybe three years down the line, when we have fundamental review of the trading book. One of the interpretation issues which I have with 610 is that when, when you read fundamental review of the trading book as a standalone regulation, which is all set in 2022, basically it was set in 2019, but you understand that without quoting the name of the bank, we have a lot of banks who have a humongous muscle power in the banking system and they can do anything, whatever they wanted to do. So they got it postponed by approximately three odd years. So it is now coming 1st January 2022, which is roughly three years down the line, right? Now in this, what exactly is happening is that once you read fundamental review of the trading book as a standalone regulation, and once you read MS 610 as a standalone regulation, you will get to know that both are not syncing with each other. Now, one is moving here, another is moving here. Maybe three years down the line, Monetary Authority of Singapore with, with due respect will come up with a lot of uh, uh, amendments, a lot of changes. Maybe they might change it up because that's for sure that 2022 is a time when the world financial system would be shaken it up. 
Now, when it, when it comes to shaken it up, I'm not referring to a word called recession. I'm referring to that all the Basel 3 guidelines will get implemented by 2022. And uh, maybe we have few other guidelines. So we, maybe we might see Basel 4 also. And also fundamental review of the trading book alongside other different rec tech products are coming. But let's hope so. Now, overall, there are 35 asset classes which we have in, you know, uh, 610. I'm going to be naming one by one as our videos would come. This is not the only video that like I told you. Now, these 35 asset classes actually which we have in 610, I have taken few important. That doesn't mean that others I have not taken is not important. They are also important. But, uh, but few asset classes which I want to deliberate now. Other I would like to deliberate later. Example, repurchase agreements, reverse repurchase agreements, debt and securities, equity investment, intangible assets, contingent liabilities and commitments. Boss, this is an area of deep fight when it comes to the integration with IFRS 9. IFRS 9, we are talking about Singapore here, not India. IFRS 9 more or less is fully implemented in Singapore. Majority of the big groups of Singapore are making their books in IFRS 9. When it comes to contingent liabilities and commitments, IFRS 9 view is completely different than the US GAAP views. And according to me, of course this is not the only video, this is an introductory video. According to me, whosoever developed 610, he not added the complete flavor of IFRS 9 when it comes to commitments and contingents. This is my personal intervention. And the, 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 the next word which I want to talk about which is earnouts. Boss, unfortunately if you read 610 completely in out, you will never get earnout a single word anywhere. And there is no case which has been presented in the complete legislation, the complete regulation that how, how earnout to be done which is in the books of the bank. Unfortunately, the mindset is that that earnout is an MA word, but that's not. There are multiple earnouts. We have tripatriate uh, in place who are dealing with the earnouts. Like we have big banks like DBS, Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse. They're also acting as a tripatriate. Last but not the least, we have financial derivatives and custodians. In my personal opinion, there is uh, another requirement of, uh, in the form of an amendment, maybe a uh, big change, whatever you refer this, when it comes to financial derivative and custodians. According to me, these two were not dealt thoroughly in the 610. That's it. Overall, 610 would have one more implications, which is the trading book. Now, they are saying that ACU, which is Asian Currency Unit, will be dismantled from DBU, which is Domestic Banking Unit, and Domestic Banking Unit is Sing Dollars, because we're talking about Singapore. It's quite easy to say, but not easy to implement. Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, Standard Chartered, JP Morgan, Straight Street, uh, BNP Paribas, and I think the list is quite long. Do you seriously think that for these banks, in just 24 months, which you have give to them, practically it's, it's 24 or 22, what you would take, they would be able to make all the changes in, in the so-called 24 months. And another beautiful thing which I already told you that 610 is do not have a sinking with FRTB. This is a contention soon for the bank when it comes to 610. Reason being, fundamental review of the trading book, I appreciate not live now, but soon. Three years is not a very long period. We're not talking about 300 years. Now, then 610 would have an issue. Last but not the least, before touching this point, one important thing which has not been pinpointed in 610, of course, we're going to be touching each thing step by step, step by step. This is not the only video about 610, right? One important thing which has not been touched upon in 610 is that which method of foreign exchange derivatives to be covered. Example, are we covering execution methods? Are we covering gross up method or are we covering net up method? 
before somebody will raise a point on me, I agree that in the in the, I think third and fourth page it has been mentioned that you are going to be governing G10 and non G10 currencies in execution as per execution turnover method. But I request you to please go down and carefully see is that method has been clearly substantiated in the later part of the game or not. Last but not least, we already have a block on 6.0. These are my personal opinions. According to me, the following are the things which are, which are relatively tough for the banks. I'm reading from my blog. Number one, the removal of the distinction between domestic banking unit and the Asian currency unit is not easy for the banks, especially banks like Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, JP Morgan, UBS, those who are very big, those who are huge sizes scale. When it comes to foreign exchange, we have almost 189 currencies of the globe which cover deliverable, non-deliverable, tradable, non-tradable. We are shooting another video when it comes to the non when it comes to the non-deliverable family. It's not easy for big banks to have that. Data set of three three hundred and forty two thousand in 65 annexures. Not an easy reason. Few minutes from now. 610 is not talking about very dedicatedly about the treatment of on and off balance sheet exposure. I think this is the biggest USP of IFRS 9. Like I, I, I am not saying that US GAAP is not a good accounting standard, but one beautiful thing about IFRS 9 is that IFRS 9 is pretty good when it comes to the IF when it comes to the valuation of contingents, financial derivatives of and on balance sheet exposure. This is something which I found it on. Of course, in the later videos, we are going to deliberate more about that. You know, something which has to be quantified more clearly in 610. Maybe, who knows, there is an another uh, uh, addendum on the cards. Last but not the least, 610 is exactly silent about one of the beautiful thing, which is BHC, Bank Holding Companies. In case of US government, recently US government changed the nomenclature of the bank holding companies. I think if I might, I might be wrong, they have made it 3% of the GDP. If the bank is 3% of the GDP of the US, then this is a this is a bank holding company. We need to check again the definition. It, it, it has recently been revised actually. 610 is not very specific talking about the bank holding company, the reporting pattern of the bank holding and the non-bank holding companies. But when it comes to we have a lot of banks in the US, those who are working in Singapore and having a good exposure also. Example, Goldman Sachs, Citi, JP Morgan. They all are American banks and they all more or less, and, and I think all are BHC, bank holding companies. Now the distinction of bank holding and non-bank holding is basically matters when you come to do DFST, Dodd Frank stress testing. And stress testing is being done by MAS also. But more of the story is when it comes to 610, the nomenclature of bank holding company and the non-bank holding company is not clearly stated. And there are several places where it has not been even stated. This is my, uh, you know, little reservation that this should have been clearly mentioned because you are here in the system when you are dealing when the American banks are, 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 are working in the Singapore. Last is, you know, the, you know, the, the most important thing about XVA, which is the valuation adjustment. This is not there, you know, uh, in, uh, in, in 6 and 0. There are seven forms like credit valuation adjustment, debit valuation adjustment, funding valuation adjustment, margin valuation adjustment, uh, you know, your uh, collectorized valuation adjustment, liquidity valuation, uh, liquidity valuation adjustment and others. It's not there. And it has to be there. Reason? XVA is a legitimate norm by Basel 3. And we know that BIS, Bank for International Settlement, is nothing but a regulator of regulators. When the global regulator is clearly stating that XVA has to be mandatory, I understand that and I appreciate that even there are banks without putting their name, though they are my favorite banks, they are still not mandatorily made XVA compulsorily for all the trades in the system. But as the most innovative central bank of the globe, Monetary Authority of Singapore and amongst my favorite, it's your duty to be specifically talking about XVA very clearly. Example, if I taking a $1 million position with DBS, is DBS supposed to do XVA? All seven? Only one. And why? 
this question has not been clearly answered in 610 which at the later stages would have huge interpretation issues and these interpretation issues would end up valuation issues and please welcome the repository the storage the technology which governs the bank treasury management systems all the banks which i quoted here now the board is very small but the list is not dbs ub ocbc goldman credit suisse jp morgan bank of america db standard chartered bnp paribas hsbc and the list is quite quite long actually you know you know mitsubishi financial group and lot they all are running on treasury management system treasury management system is not a toy which can easily be configured it requires a huge effort configuration is an issue and some sometimes you need to do the customization one by sometimes most of the time you need to do the customization according to my personal intervention 610 is a wonderful stuff singapore need that monetary authority of singapore did that excellent 10 out of 10 but there are some interpretation issues and there are some places which are which either deliberately left blank maybe they the fresh amendment is on the way or maybe it is not being thought the way it should be so i request monetary authority of singapore to please consider these changes of course in november when i am coming i am hereby giving a written uh, acknowledgement letter to mas when we will give everything in writing in other case uh, you need anything to talk it about right now you are most welcome my mobile number is 9899242978 my email id is rahul.magan@treasuryconsulting.in my skype id is rahul5327 our platform is fixed income dot global and please don't forget that treasury consulting fixed income platform is now being launched in 148 countries of the globe and ruling the google's first rank and also do not forget that we are the first company in singapore who launched 610 trainings which are on our fixed income platform if you have anything to talk refer us 9899242978 Thank you and have a wonderful time. Thank you.